and welcome everyone welcome to this continuation of the actual let's play of master of orion we were actually looking at the darlock race last time and we'll actually continue on with that particular race in just a second now before we actually do that let's actually go through the steps of actually going into the actual game we did that saved last time actually since last time i actually did a little bit extra further playing by myself just to get a better understanding of actually what's actually the interplay within the game itself so as i click on load here you'll actually see my last replay should be listed on here interesting um my actually last replay was as a, as a terran now what we did on the last play here we actually played as a darlock um i should just be able to double click on that entry i'm assuming nope i just click on load game and we'll actually be loading the game as such so in just a second we'll actually be carrying on where we left off on the last session playing on the Darlock. Um, now, I did mention the last time that there's a few famous actors that actually did some of the voiceovers. Um, I just looked up some of those actors again today, and you might actually who actually, of course, is known to most of us from Star Wars. Um, also, Michael Dorn is one of the actual voiceover actors. Um, I'll put, actually put a link to the actual game's website in the description of the recording. At least you can have a look at the actual full listing in there as such. Now, let's have a look at basically what we did last time. We basically started off here in the bottom corner. I do bear in mind, you can actually use your cursor keys on your keyboard to actually move around on the map. Might make that a little bit simpler. Um, again, you might see that there are some uh, star systems visible. We can't reach them yet because, again, we have to travel through those connecting lines as we see on the screen here at the moment. And I believe last time we were actually looking at exploring further and we actually had found a pirate base here on this particular planet. Nothing I could do about that at that point in time. But there's some other planets here as well where I actually think it might be sensible to settle down on. Uh, because they're kind of choking points or connecting nexus in terms of the actual transits. So we had Nazin as our home base. Uh, Radun, I believe it is, has basically been colonized by us already as well. And if I just look at the fleet overview that we got on here, we should see that we basically got one uh, military ship. That's the, I think it's the frigate that we got. And we got two scouting ships at this point in time. And in terms of actual production, we should see that we are producing hydroponic farms on both planets. And next in line will be a factory ship, I believe. So let's zoom in on this. That is actually a space factory. And then following on to that, we're basically going to be building some colony ships. Now let's see actually if we can expand this a little bit further. So let's put an automated factory on that queue as well. And let's maybe put that in before we're actually going to start our space factory. That will actually accelerate the process of the uh, construction later on. Again, the economic advisor coming up at this point in time, talking to us about the actual population that's affected by research, food, production, output, etc., etc. Um, if you're new to the game, very useful to read through all of those bits. I've played this before, so I'm just going to skip through some of those. I'll highlight some of those again to you. So just there's buttons across the very, very top here. So like the Empire here, the next one is Research. Those will give you insight into actually the capabilities of the system. And we'll, we'll, particularly with this particular race, the Dorlock. The Dorlock, we're going to be focusing on that espionage, but we'll come on to that in just a second. And like we said last time, we need to research that Xeno relationships to be able to build our spy center first off. Now there's also the actual uh, tech tree that we can actually highlight here. So if we click on view tech tree, this is a feature you'll come across in lots of these kind of games like Civilization, Master of Orion. It gives you the ability to really look into actually what kind of technologies would be available if you were to progress through them. And actually these little branches here depict the actual prerequisites that you need to have to be able to achieve a particular goal. And as you highlight one of these, it actually highlights also for you all the prerequisites that you need to have gone through as such. Let's go back to that very, very beginning of this listing here. So at the moment, we're focusing in on Xeno relationships. And that actually results then in a link into these following on from there. And we can actually create a management. We can actually do alien psychology. So again, we can actually see how that progresses later on in the actual tech tree. Uh, click on OK. Done. Now, there was also a search functionality on there. So if you're looking for a particular piece of tech, that actually allows to look through that listing to find it. Now you also come across the top here the ability to look at your ship designs 
at the moment i think we only got the frigates in here as we research more technologies we should see that actually more ship designs become available but we can also create our own ship designs from here if we wanted to so we can actually change the composition in terms of the modules weapons etc etc um, diplomacy i think we touched upon that briefly last time it's the ability for us to create those relationships with the other races now it's kind of my intention to do this spying on the uh, on the Psylon. Uh, the Marshan, I think it's a good idea to try to foster a good relationship with them. Now I don't have an embassy yet, so I'm just going to leave it as is for the moment. It does give you some insight in here into terms of in, in terms of uh, number of known fleets, colonies, etc. Again, that will basically grow as I get more insight into actually what's happening in the map. Now, one of the things we will be able to do with that space factory later on, we can actually build uh, monitoring stations that allow us to monitor what's happening in the surrounding area. It gives us more insight into, again, those fleets of our other um, races that we come across. Now, Paths to Victory here gives us our progress along the various different goals. So there's five key methods towards actually getting to victory. A victory of excellence, conquest victory, technology victory, and of course, typically it's the Cylon that's leading in that particular race in terms of the actual uh, research performance that I've done. Diplomatic victory and economic victory also has options on there. All depends on the actual GDP in this instance or the number of votes. So you need to have your. Uh, it's, it's like a like like almost like a UN of the galaxy have have set up that you know, in the, in the system itself in the game. And then the votes will actually determine whether you become the Supreme Chancellor. Um, I think for the moment we're, we're kind of ready to progress to the next turn. So I'm just going to click on the next turn. See what's actually going to happen. Goes again through the other races. And at this point again they're, they're just talking about some of those empire management facilities. In terms of taxes in this particular instance. So do bear in mind. I think I touched upon that last time already. The ability for us to influence the tax rate. That of course has an impact upon the happiness of your population, but it also has an impact upon the actual uh, credits that you're actually earning in your empire. So let's just carry on from here. Uh, actually, consider building a space factory. So we already have that in our queue, so I'm not too concerned about that. And I should just be able to go to the actual fleet that requires some orders, as I need for orders. I uh, think we were scouting here, so let's just scout out these other two planets in here before we progress further from there. Now, we just have completed a hydrophonic farm on our, our home planet, Nazine 2. And already, as you as we saw in the last term, I actually put the automated factory in the queue already. Uh, it looks like these two will actually encounter each other shortly. So that's the, uh, the two other races we met. We'll actually get in touch with each other shortly. move I find out there's not a radiator radi planet there and I'm gonna get this particular craft to travel to let's travel to this system here it's close enough to our earlier found systems already um, always a good idea to just to scout around the surrounding areas and I think what we were doing with the actual freight we were to return it to our home planet to be able to repair that Ah, we just discovered Misha. So actually that system here, is that Misha? This system here, that's probably the home system of the Mershan. So there's certain names to certain systems that are always the home systems of the individual races. I think it's Misha that's the home system of the Mershan, but we'll find out that shortly once we actually do our scouting of the planet. And that's Misha Prime. Ah, it's not the home system. Okay, I was mistaken. Um, let's just scout out further, see what we can find. Let's issue orders to this one to go to that system. Um, and we'll see where we come across further planets. We have found Paradise. Paradise is located down here. So again, as soon as you reach the actual waypoint, or at least become within range of a system, it'll give you the name of the system. Uh, again, those are set in the system for you. Just progressing to the next turn. Xenu relationship research has completed. Perfect. So we should now be able to start building One our actual spy center. From the truth, most. Now it costs.
cost us 80 in terms of construction cost. Just wondering, is that sufficient credit that I'll have to be able to build that? We'll have a look into that shortly, because I think it's actually beneficial for us to get that spy center up and running as quick as we can. Uh, let's first designate our next research target, and it looks like engineering is a good, a good one to go for. It gives us the ability to build our own destroyers, as well as basically get anti-ship missiles in there as well. And that's really, as you can see already, the actual military focus. Military the advisor recommends that particular piece of technology. So clicking on done. And again, as you can see, we're now able to build that spy center. So again, that military advice, just what I just told you, is actually being reconfirmed here by the game itself. Okay, so let's briefly pop over to our home planet. I could, of course, use the empire management to do that. Just going to click on the planet itself. I'm going to add the spy center to here. 14 turns. Now let's have a brief look at how long that would take. 14 turns I already said, but in terms of the credits, that would be 640 credits, which we don't have. So I'm just going to... Hmm, I think I should just keep the space factory prioritized over the actual spy center. But what I can actually do, I could prioritize this in terms of getting that factory up and running quicker hmm what should I do well let's move some more of our people from research in this instance into the actual food production so they'll grow our empire or at least the population on our home world by one within the next seven turns so that should do for the moment click on done and we need to basically assign some orders to a fleet at the moment it's in order in in orbit of our home planet uh, we can actually upgrade it based upon the new additions we've actually had there in terms of research I'm just gonna invest that a bit extra bit of money into there and I'm just gonna skip the turn because it's not fully repaired yet as you see it's not fully repaired we're just gonna wait one turn for that to be repaired before we move it into a position where we can actually cover our colonies and what we just found here we basically oh, discovered Orion interesting so electronic disturbances when you basically are approaching a star system uh, as we're doing with our scout over here uh, you'll typically get indicators of uh, any planets that might actually have uh, either a colony of another race on there or what actually might be a space alien or anything of that particular sort to be found interesting now orion really of course is where the name of the game comes from so masters of orion so if we're able to get that particular planet and basically colonize it it gives us a significant advantage. I'll, I'll try to highlight those in just a minute. Um, let's just have a look at the actual links here again. So clicking on next, assigning orders to this particular ship. Visit that planet and straight away what's your orders for the next planet to be reconnoitered, uh, recon. So moving on, so we basically can now issue orders again to this fleet here. And we did find that pirate base there. So that means that pirate ships will spawn there every couple of turns. Um, I just need to make sure that for the moment I cover this particular warp point until I've actually got a destroyer because I, I can't really do much about that particular pirate base until actually I'm able to build a destroyer. Now we are researching that particular piece of technology to be able to do that. So we just have to basically let that progress in terms of research and then hopefully we'll be able to build one shortly after to take out that actual pirate base. Uh, in terms of actually progressing here, I think that might be a nice planet to go to later on. Maximum population on that one is 13, but then again, we also got some nice planets in this system here. And again, this is kind of a nexus, and I think this would be beneficial to basically take um, Misha Prime, because of course that blocks access to Orion. So if we're able to basically take ownership of that particular system there, that would serve us quite nicely. Anyways, uh, we've just completed our automated factory, and the space factory has now just commenced production. And instead of the original eight, it's now gone to six, because of course we've got that additional production capability through that building that we put down, which gives us an extra three, or actually two extra production should have given us. We already had one extra from, to start off with. Click on next again. Progressing to, to the next turn. Now again, we got a fleet that requires some orders. 
So that's that scout. Ooh, that's a nice planet. An ocean planet. Very, very fertile typically and good for population growth. Um, I'm just going to progress the scouting down the those lines further. In reality, I would love to explore Orion, but as you'll see here, this space alien is one of the strongest ones you'll encounter. That's what they call the Guardian. Um, so I need to have either sufficient ships or at least sufficient firepower to be able to take that out. Very, very strong offensive powers. Decent defensive powers as well. Uh, for the moment, too much for me to actually do anything with. So I'm just going to have to progress my scout along those other warp routes to find what else in terms of planets I can find. Again, those links in your actual uh, queue here gives you an indication as to what you've actually found. So progressing on to our next turn here. So we should be in turn 28 now. Nothing remarkable happening, so I can actually straight away progress to the next turn. And we've just encountered yet another race, it looks like. Transmission start. This is the overseer of the Meklar Combine. The Meklar. Contacting unknown naturally occurring life form. Com frequencies locked. If you listen to that actual voice, it, to, my, to me it sounds like... Have you ever watched Battlestar Galactica? If so, then I think it sounds a little bit like the, the robots that we encounter in there as well. Um, nothing we can do with them yet, but let's just progress to the next turn again. And we've just completed our research. A new ship design becomes available, and of course we have just found a pirate fleet. Like I said, it spawns every couple of turns around that particular pirate base. So we want to take out that pirate base as quickly as we can. Now let's first do something with the actual research One that we've done here. Is drawn from the truth. Choose our next target of research. Now where shall we progress next? Hmm. Now we do get some advantage by Daisy taking the advanced fusion here. It's not one of the recommended ones by our advisors, but I think it's a useful one because we'll be able to get faster travel for our ship. So actual travel speed increased to 1.5, so that's an actual 50% increase in our travel time. So it should be about a third of the time reduction in terms of transit times between the different systems. Okay, again, just progressing on to the next term. Ubuth has been discovered. High morale is key to a high, happy populace. Again, gives an indicator as to what kind of things we can do to actually increase morale. We've just found a new system. It is exactly where our scout is heading off to already. So nothing to worry about. And this particular scout here has arrived in system. And we have just scouted a barren planet. I'm going to do actually over here. I'm just going to move them on to the next system. And hopefully that will lead us to be able to get into kit here as well. Now there's about four planets on there. Could be an interesting system. Let's just see where it takes us. Now we do have a position here where we can actually issue orders to this fleet. Now the, it looks like the pirates are actually heading our way. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm just going to place it in a guard position. So that means that they won't be able to progress beyond me without actually getting into conflict with me on this war point. Okay, both our planets have grown in terms of population. So if we look at this particular planet here, I just want to move one of these production points into the actual production. Actually, I was hoping to do that. It won't make any difference for the production of our space factory. So I'll do that on the next turn once we complete our space factory. I just want to get that spy center out a little bit quicker. Just going to move one of them into there. Do bear in mind, at the moment our pollution level here stands at 4%. And as you just might have seen as I moved an additional citizen into the production queue, that increased by an extra percentage per turn. Now, the pollution will increase as you're investing more in terms of in product into production. And we'll have a look at the actual impact. It will have an impact upon actual uh, growth rate, etc., etc., of your population, but also the happiness of the population. Progression on to the next turn. For your eyes only, and our first, face, first space factory has just been completed. Perfect. So if I just click on view fleet here, we can straight away go to where we can actually issue orders to it. And I actually want to move it to that warp point which we're defending there at the moment. I want to build a battle station over there. 
Battle station just means that aliens won't be able to progress beyond those points unless they actually got an open borders agreement with us. Again, that will basically secure this chain of uh, systems here. And next one in the queue was our spice, uh, spy base, spy center. I'm just going to move one of these production units from the actual food production onto the actual production of the spy center itself. So that's taking it down from 10 turns to mere 8 turns. Um, I think after that I'll need to invest at least one turn into actually the cleanup before I'm actually going to invest more time in the actual production of the colony ships itself. So this cleans up the actual pollution that we have at that point in time so that 4% plus 8% will be 12% will be cleaned up in that one turn over there. Okay, issuing further orders in this instance to our scout. And we just found ourselves a barren planet again. Special artifacts that should give us an advantage in terms of actual research on that planet I believe. At least that's how it was in the original instance of Masters of Orion. Artifacts gives you research bonuses. Again, clicking on next. And we have basically got another encounter here. So it's those two pirate raiders here. Um, the victory chances are set to good. So I'm just going to set it to auto resolve. And it'll just auto resolve that combat for me. Just saves me the time of having to actually go into the actual battle. Now, sometimes you're actually able to positively influence the battle results by doing it yourself. So it, it's a choice you need to make for yourself in terms of whether you actually want to manually manage it or want the system to do that for you based upon the odds. So a bit of a roll of the dice at that point. But yeah, it's a choice. We're in turn 33, 34 now. Waiting for orders on this fleet here. And we just arrived in this system that we basically had on the chain. We found ourselves another desert planet. No specials on there. Just going to set orders for the next turn already for that. Let me just go to our home planet here. We're researching the spy center. I still don't have enough credit to actually get it in here straight away. That's fine for the moment. Now we do have actually a gas giant in this system. So I could potentially have actually used my space factory to actually put on there uh, a gas siphoning station. So the space factory itself serves multiple different purposes. It of course allows to build structures in space itself. In this sense I already said I'm going to build that sp battle station here at the warp junction here. Um, but what it can also do, as long as it got colonies in a system, if I was for example a, uh, a gas giant or an asteroid field, I can actually build either a mining station or a gas siphoning station on there to actually generate additional credit. Uh, if I got the right technology, I might actually also be able to do a uh, research facility in there to actually enhance the research being generated or er, research point being generated. At the moment, my number of research points being generated stands at seven, two from population, five from buildings. Uh, but of course, that could be changed over time as that changes. Uh, we have just detected an anomaly. Now, if I click on that link here, it'll take us to that system where we found it. Well, actually, in fact, it's not in the system itself. It's near to the system. Um, I can't issue orders for that to be explored yet. So I just need to get my scout into that system there for us to be able to do something with that. We have just discovered the Perseo system. It's just because our scout has gotten within scanning range of that system. We've at least got a, a bit of information on the system, found the name, plus, of course, the number of planets in that particular system as well. <clears throat> Progressing to the next turn. Ah, Meklon. So that should be the home system of the Meklar. If I'm not mistaken, that is. So let, let's just in a minute see how that actually goes. Issue orders to another fleet. So let's just go into kit with this ship. I'll actually just explore that first planet straight away. Okay, so we just discovered an anomaly around that planet. And we also actually see that there are some uh, ships. Now, that is not really what I was hoping for. So the Maclar home fleet, so they've actually kept their frigate in system, is now defending their war point. And my scout comes in there's nothing I can do other than click on auto resolve 
Now I'm kind of hoping that there will be a retreat option here in the future. Like I said, it's a uh, pre-release or early access version of the game still. So that means that still certain enhancements will be made into the game itself. I just lost my scout, unfortunately. Now it did give me of course the opportunity to have scouted out further parts of the galaxy here. Um, pirate fleet detected, again another one. Um, again, I can't do anything about that pirate fleet until I've actually, or at least about the pirate base, until I've got a destroyer. So that will be on my list of priorities in a minute. Let me just start building the actual military outpost here. And again, that disturbance that we found, that's the home planet of the Maclar. <clears throat> so I'm leaving that as it stands for the moment. Okay, nothing to do in this turn. Now I do actually find out that they already have a military outpost on this warp junction here. So I'm actually trying to get that uh, Perseo system to be blocked off by means of that battle station or military outpost that they placed there. Again, you'll see that little icon here, the little uh, yellow triangle with the skull on there. That indicates where the actual pirate fleet is at this point in time. And I should have, of course, my frigate there. And it should have enough power to actually defend this war point for the moment. Now, once my military station has been completed, I should be able to also repair my ship at that particular point in time, uh, at that particular war point itself. Now, Ryun has got a production queue here already, and I'm actually looking to build a hydrophonic farm here at the moment. It might be beneficial if I just invest some money into... Well, let's just complete that farm, I think. Actually, can we just build a factory here? We can build a factory there. Maybe we should build the factory first. And we do have enough credit to actually do that. So let's do that. And that should speed up the production of the other buildings here as such as well. First spy needs orders. <clears throat> so our, our spy center has been completed. Our first spy is in training at the moment. Now what we can do at this point in time, we can assign it to a colony. We can put the actual production on hold. Or we can assign a mission. Now in terms of the missions, you will see that there of course is the counter espionage that we can do with them. Or we can actually look to acquire data. Now what I'm looking to do here really, I want to basically send them to the Cylon. So I actually want to send them to Meklar. Now has that planet been colonized now? In looking at the color coding above there, it looks like they've taken ownership of it. Um, so I'm just looking for this particular spy here. I'm looking to assign that to a colony. So I can actually assign it to any of the colonies with a small circle around it. So you should see that this colony here has got the circle around it. It takes two turns to get there. I'm looking to see if I can actually send it to the enemy home world. Which should be in the Mentor system. Unfortunately I can't. And it's actually the first time I'm trying to do the espionage. Never done that before. Um, so I guess for the moment I'm just going to put them on counter espionage here. And that will basically defend my own planets from enemy spies in terms of them trying to basically get technology etc. from us. Okay, again, the spy center has actually been completed. And we have got our first spy has been recruited and is ready to be assigned. So we've already done that just a minute ago, so not too worried about that. Again, we found ourselves a gas giant here, so let's assume that that is a habitable planet. So yes, it is habitable. It's a barren planet. It's got special gems. Let's straight away assign the orders for next planet to be explored. Um, again, like I said, if we basically use our space factory, we should be able to build a extra structure around the gas planet to generate additional credit each turn. Uh, okay, the spy is ready. Just progressing to the next turn. And like I said, we will be able to auto-resolve this. Favorable. Yes. Now, we did win this, but it looks like our ship has gotten significantly Welcome further damage compared Galactic to previous. Network. 
War back on time has grown in strength. All right. So it looks like where we got two colonies, one of the other alien races now has got three. Now I think I will just send this one home. How long would it take? Four turns, five turns. And I might just wait it out. No, I'm just going to send it home for the moment being. We have just completed advanced fusion research. Now, having sent that ship home will also allow us to upgrade that vessel. So there's a benefit to that. I'm just going to update all of our blueprints. So you see, see that the blueprints that we basically haven't been able to manipulate is the colony ship, of course. Um, we're not able to do the scout either, but what we're doing here is we're able to upgrade all the designs to get the faster engine in there. And again, that little symbol next to it indicates which is actually being updated. It's in this instance the engine of all those vessels. We're just going to assign new research on the tree here. So let's look at where our advisors tell us to go. Civil transports. I think our weapons could be upgraded. So let's go with that pre recommended by our military advisor option. Progressing to the next turn. And it looks like we have to issue orders. Yes, we didn't issue them last turn. So it's orders to basically explore another planet, and that's a Tundra planet. All right, where can we send our ship to now? We haven't actually explored that system yet, so I'm just going to straight away issue orders for our scout to go there. Typically, when I'm playing the game, I try to emphasize the production of colony ships. Now, I actually am producing a colony ship at the moment. It's going to take us another couple of turns here, another 15 turns for that to be produced. What else can I place in our queue in the meantime? I could do another scout, but I could do that maybe from our planet. I did already say that last time. You can use those buttons here at the bottom right to basically straight away go to the other colony and look at the actual figures from there. In terms of our food production, it looks like we're actually maximizing that at the moment. Do bear in mind, the current planet has got a high level of gravity, which actually got a negative impact upon our production of regular production, but also in terms of our research and food production. So it might not have actually been the best planet to pl place ourselves on, it looks like. Oh, well, we just got to live with what we basically chose last time. Let's just have a look at what else we can do on here. We can place another star base here, and I think that would be beneficial because that'll actually expand our control point set, which at the moment stands at three out of 15. So we're using three out of the 15 points, 10 being generated by our capital, five by our star base. First planet automatically has a star base, second planet will be producing one. So we should see that increase to 20 once that star base is completed. Let's click on next. And again, next, we're just gonna try to progress through here a little bit quicker. And now we should be able to see that this particular ship here is upgradable. Just going to click on the upgrade option. We have to spend one credit to upgrade it, including now our newer engine design, which basically means we can get back to that warp point a bit quicker. And we're just going to see that ship being repaired. So I'm just going to set it to skip the turn. So next turn again, we will basically get to issue orders to that ship. It looks like we need another one turn for that to be completed. And... Had upon farm completed, perfect. Actually, we should be able to see that our population growth is increasing a little bit because of that, because our food production has now gone up from our original two to four. Two due to population and of course, two due to the building. Is there anything else I can do on here in terms of the food production? No, it doesn't look like there is. So I'm just gonna go with the government support facility here for the moment. And then we're going to progress through the others. Now, the government support facility, like I mentioned last time, helps maintain our morale. Actually helps boost our morale, I should say. To, may, of course, make sure that we don't get any unhappy citizens. Well, I think I should have actually issued orders to this one here. Uh, what can I do at this point? There's nothing really in this particular system in terms of any gas giants or anything of that sort. 
So what I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to have to move it back to that gas giant in our home system. And then take it from there. Now this ship has not been fully repaired. So I'm just going to move it back to that warp point. So even though I got a military outpost over there, it always makes sense to have some ships supporting it. So at least when the pirates arrive, we'll be able to provide that support over there. Now we've just now met our next higher. race here. It's the Sakura. Rather not my priority. Okay, we just discovered we're being able to scan that system, at least from afar, because of course our scout is passing within the scanner range of that planet. Now I've just noticed that again we will have a pirate fleet here. Now if I look at the actual battle station here, we should be able to see that gives us additional command, uh, sorry, it costs us a command point. So where we were using three earlier, we're using four now. Uh, it does actually provide me the ability to repair my ships by 20% per turn. Just like being around your own starbase itself. Let's click on done. Progress to the next turn. Our frigate should get here shortly. And we just need to issue orders to the ship here. Just going to tell it to explore. Do the same for the next planet. And we have some seen population growth here. Good. So we're actually able to increase our actual production down here. So that has now generated two additional production points. So we should get our government support facility a bit quicker. Next turn again. Look at where our pirates is, and we got our frigate here again. I'm going to set that to defensive mode, and it should basically get support from our military outpost when defending against the pirates. Now, our research has been completed, so let's choose a new research option. In actual fact, the research we've completed actually gives a chance to choose between one of two options here. Um, we either basically choose to focus on on the shield technology or the ECM jammer. So it, it's a one or the other choice. So what do we want to go with? Um, I think it would be beneficial to get our shields. Uh, yeah, let's go with the shields for the moment. ECM jammer, I could have chosen. Um, I'm choosing for the shields. Now do bear in mind, once you make that choice, there's no turning back. So just bear that choice in mind. And of course we can update our blueprint straight away. And we should see that our frigate can be upgraded to level four. Next point to focus in on, molecular, molecular manipulation, and that will give us an advantage in terms of smaller missiles, also more powerful missiles, the Merculite missiles, plus our atmospheric renewer. That'll help us reduce our pollution that's being generated by our actual production on planet. And we're gonna straight away upgrade that actual frigate from three to four. Again, that should help us in the defense against that pirate. Uh, I think for today, we're just going to call an end to our recording. So what I'm going to do again, I'm just going to save this away. So next time, we're just going to carry on from the point where we left off. We are in turn 52. And I'm just going to thank you very much for watching and look forward to seeing you again next time. And enjoy the rest of your day.